That was a... I love experimental, and I love music that pushes the boundary of what reality really is. We live in a society that likes to conform to everything, and that music, especially because she's American, breaks the boundary of what I think is normal and what I expect from a band from the States. It blew my mind. It took me to another place. I'll never be the same after that. Cool Hand Podcast, something you got to deal with. Welcome back to the show. I am your host. My name is Q. Very special episode today. Very special episode. Now, since uh, in 2020, I went to a show. My wife and I went to a show for Duran Jones and the Indications. That's the name of the band. Great band. It was like an old school style band. They sung like Think Temptations, kind of, but not exactly. That energy. And they had an opener called E La Bamba, which was a great show as well. I bought E La Bamba's record. That was the last concert I went to before the coronavirus pandemic shut down and shook up the world. Fast forward to 2021. Uh, There's a lot going on in 2021. The coronavirus pandemic uh, has is still here. Obviously, there's a lot of commotion about it. And of course, we'd like to stay safe. And I hope whoever's watching this is safe and in good condition right now. Uh, But one day, I don't know what happened, how this came across my radar. I saw an artist that I rock with. I rock with 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 this artist and we're going to talk about it. I saw that they were opening for another band in Pittsburgh. And I was mad stressed. Why was I mad stressed? Because it's like, okay, I want to stay safe. I want to do this, that, and the third. And and this this artist, this one artist, I might have to tap into this to this concert. So what I did, I tapped into this concert. Lorraine, that is the person who opened up for a band called Black Midi. Black Midi is a UK rock band. I don't know if they're classified as punk. I didn't go to the concert to see Black Midi, although Black Midi turned all the way up, all the way up. It was a it was an amazing performance Black Midi put on. Uh, Just real quick about Black Midi. They were going so hard. The crowd was going so stupid that I thought the floor was going to break at the pl- at the venue we were at. It's not a huge venue. I thought the floor was going to collapse. But Black Midi had all the everything, they, especially the piano, I'm, the piano, excuse me, the saxophone. I used to play the saxophone as a youngster. One of my biggest regrets is giving up the saxophone because I was pretty good at it. I was young and I quit. But Black Midi violated Pittsburgh with with the with the performance that they put on oh man great show but that's not what we're here to talk about today uh so shout out to black midi uh my man's in in uh, he talked to the drummer afterwards and the drummer seemed like a like a cool dude so shout out to black midi but when it comes to lorraine that's who i I stepped outside for this is an artist that i've been listening to since the year 2017 where she dropped her uh, self-titled Uh, project. I don't know if it was an EP or an LP. Uh, The difference between EP and LP is the amount of songs. And I think if it's longer than 30 minutes, it's an LP. If it's less than 30 minutes, it's an EP. And I think an LP has like eight songs at minimum. Weird stuff that that's trivial and it doesn't matter. But I came across this artist in 2017 back when i used to go on the the website pitchfork.com i used to go on that website every day that's how i would find new music a lot i would go on there and check out the albums that they reviewed and i would go on there and be like hey i like this hey i like that and i came across an article and it and, and i'm drawing from my memory that it was great albums that you may not know about something along those lines so that came out in that year of 2017 so i clicked on it and uh, the artwork for the self-titled project lorraine was interesting i liked the 
I liked the artwork. So I ended up checking out the project and I really liked it. Her music is classified as I, the name that I saw a lot with her music is experimental. I'm going to put that in air quotes because uh, the, the thing about humans, the thing about humans is or people, whatever, I guess the human nature is to either compare it with something or there's there just has to be some type of grouping or classification uh, with us human beings. That's what we do. That's how we identify things. And I, you know, tell one thing, say differentiate between things. OK, that, that's what I believe with human nature. There's always a classification or a comparison. So just to to help and put your minds on a subject, on a genre, rather, um, it's classified as experimental music. And when I first heard the, the self titled project, I, I fell in love with it. I liked what I heard. It was refreshing. She has a very smooth, soothing, soothing singing voice, which uh, who doesn't like smooth and soothing? So and I, I'm not going to compare it with anything and I'm not going to like I'm just going to call it her her genre. It's Lorraine. It's not experimental. If you want to call it that cool, it's just Lorraine. And uh, there was one specific song that I really liked, which was called Witch Fork. And oh, man, that was so good. That was check that out. I love uh, there's just so many different sounds and how everything works together with that song. It, it's just crazy. That's my best way of describing it. Crazy. The song goes in reverse. Y'all, y'all remember y'all was talking about Kendrick Lamar, how he made an album in reverse, uh, and, and everything. Her song went in reverse. Like her song, like was like went in reverse with that song, and just something like that. You got to check out the song to to really feel me on what I'm talking about right now. So, anyway, that's how I was introduced to this artist, and when I saw that she was opening it up, I had to tap in. I had to tune into the show. So. Of course, I bought I bought my tickets. I had one of my one of my one of my guys. He was already going to that show to see Black Midi. So I'm like, cool, I'm going to link up with my mans. We're going to go to this concert. Now, me being the podcaster that I am, uh, I haven't been to a concert since February 2020. I thought I'm going to bring my camera. And potentially get some some footage, some like interview footage, not just footage of the show, but rather interview footage. And uh, we'll talk about that a little later. So we go to the show. I got there early. I was there at like 645. I sat in the car for a little bit. You had to have uh, either a negative COVID test, proof of a negative COVID test, or you had to have your vaccination card handy in order to get into this show. I brought my car with me. I was strapped with the card, but there's a long line to get in. I guess they got to check your ID, your ticket and your card or negative COVID test. So that made the wait time longer to get in. We finally get in. I did not. I wanted to be front row. I was not anywhere close to front row for two reasons. One, I'm very I'm in the very front. It's all like a standing room. For one reason, I'd be in the very front, nobody in front of me, and everybody would be you know, behind me, not in the front, so I could get the best footage of the show. Um, another reason is I don't want to be around that many people. Like, <laughs> at the end of the day, like, <laughs> it, it, we're still in a pandemic. I don't care if you have a COVID vaccination card or whatever, you can you know, still have it. So there's, there's certainly an amount of risk of just being there to begin with. But anyway, way, this isn't about no pandemic right now, but I didn't get the spot that I wanted. Uh, first L, that was my first L. But anyway, it, it was she came out uh, with her band. You had somebody on the keys, the synths, if you will. I don't know the keys, synths, whatever this um, musical producer uh, vernacular is. You had a guy on uh, the guitar or bass, one of the two, and you had somebody else on the drums who completely obliterated his set. He uh, shout out to the drum guy, and also you had somebody on the sax. I think I think there was a beat machine involved. I don't know. I think she had one of those producer beat machines, and uh, and she was messing around with that too. But I want to talk about the show. 
uh, the actual performance, the actual show. Uh, she comes on, she starts performing uh, something off of her new project, which I didn't talk about yet, which is called Fatigue. Um, holding the record up right now, but I'll, I'll put a graphic of the record up on the screen so you could see it a little better. Uh, but Fatigue came out this year uh, by Lorraine. Uh, there's, uh, it, it's not a long project. There's how many songs? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It looks like there's 14, there's 14 tracks, but some of them are like a minute long. Some of it's almost like an interlude, but that is also uh, a great project. And, and that's another reason why I went to go see her to, to tap in and see how this record translated in front of a live audience. Uh, so when you're dealing with something like this, quote unquote, experimental music and they're deal and they're using these various sounds, these various noises and instruments, I love to see that. I, I would love to see it. So I wanted to see it myself and I did. So as she came out. Uh, she has like flowers like on the stage, decorated on the stage and everything. I, I don't know what, what, what sage is. I, I don't, I don't know. Cause I don't burn it, but I'm pretty sure it's sage and she, she has it and she, you know, lets the air hit it and uh, she starts performing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dark room and she starts going in, but uh, I'm not going to go track by track, but she put on an amazing performance. My man who's standing next to me never heard her music before or listened to it. In fact, uh, as we were kicking it before we came to the show, he's like, you know, <laughs> he, he's pr he's pretty much uttering the sentiments of I don't care about the opener. I'm like, he, I'm like, I bet. I said, I bet when you get there, you're going to talk about how she changed your life. And this ain't even no like I'm not even like saying that to like. Uh, this I, I know my man's and my man's I knew once he heard it, knowing his personality, he was going to love the music. Naturally, I was right about my man's and the music. He loved the music. So uh, he was captivated by by the show. She seemed like she recorded something on the beat machine while she was performing and she played it back. She, it was like this 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 loud this. I'm not going to do it because I'm not trying to like distort your ears with clipping and <laughs> with my audio. But she did like this Yelp, Yelp scream thing with her voice. <laughs> She had that sound illuminating through the room with the beat machine, the whatever beat machine you guys use. So she's doing that. You know, she interacted with the crowd some and it was great. It was it was great. So she ended up performing that song at the very end, the Witch Fork song, which I was I was surprised. I thought she was going to play all the songs or rather perform songs from fatigue and uh, she played witch fork and I was I was really happy about that because that takes me back to when I first discovered her music <laughs>
So uh, that was a great show. And the last song on the on the record, let's talk about the last song. I believe it's Take Two. And it's pretty much uh, her vocals and like soothing vocals. It's a calming sound on the on this track. And she performs that. I'm like, OK, interesting. Interesting that she cools things down like she ends her set with this song but that's the thing about live performances the live song takes on a a different tone of its own because you have she ended up blowing our ears out (laughs) and and i had to holler at her afterwards like like you violated my ears like and that's the thing like she did this like loud screeching sound like not literally vocally, but with <laughs> the sound coming from one of these machines, she turned that joint all the way up. The whole venue was gone bonkers. Like the, the decibel of this sound was ridiculous, but she was like having a rock star moment, like da 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 hair flinging and all that stuff. It was a completely rock star. Um, it was it was it was like, you know, like a punk rock moment. It was a bad it was a bad boy moment, leather jacket moment where she was doing this rock star stuff. And uh, she, she turned up a little bit on the stage and then she walked out. She walked out to leave our ears uh, bleeding. Right. So she did that. And the people around me, I noticed some of these folks are like covering their ears. I'm like, y'all are soft in my mind. Probably the smart thing to do is to cover your ears because like you walked off the stage and my ears are still here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, like how long is this going to last? My ears are kind of like hurting. They didn't hurt, but you know what I'm saying? So that's happening. And I'm watching more people as this sound prolongs, this elongated decibel sound this loud sound it's noise in in school you learn there's a difference between like (laughs) like noise and something else it was a noise and uh, people were covering their ears but i took it on as a challenge i'm like i'm not like i'm not gonna punk out to this noise i'm keeping my stuff like i'm not covering no ears so my ears didn't get covered i accepted the the fake challenge that was created in my head and the sound eventually went off and the people uh, dispersed the set was over she came back out and I thought she was going to perform one last song which was uh, one of my favorites in a standout song from the record fatigue called blame me please listen to that great song I'm not going to talk about it or break it down it is a very good song I do not think you will be disappointed so Uh, That happens and Black Midi comes on. But let's talk about uh, another reason why I came there. Like I wanted to come there to chop it up with her. I wanted to uh, maybe get an impromptu interview, something like that. And that happened Uh, in between time, in between uh, me talking to her and and all that other stuff. I saw a couple of the band members outside uh, chilling, you know, was during Black Midi set. I stepped outside for a little bit and. I saw a couple of the band members chilling, talking outside. Whoop, whoop. I walks up to him. I'm like, you know what? I, I don't I don't just show love to to the main performer. I show love to the, the band. So I holler at the band and I'm like, yo, y'all guys put on a great show. I know these guys are traveling state to state, riding around in a, in a sprinter or a van or something like that. And these cats is tired and they come. And they put on this great show for the people, which you got to appreciate. So I holler at them, talk about, like, yo, is all y'all from Brooklyn? Woo, woo, woo. Uh, Just 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 chopping it up with them real quick. The one guy's name was uh, Justin and I believe the other one's name was Zach. Chilling, chilling outside, just chilling outside. We chopped it up for 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 a quick grip. And they they humble guys because they gave the credit back to Lorraine. As they're the performers of the music, but they said it's all her music. When I asked them a specific question, I don't remember what it is. They're like, yeah, but it's Taja's music, which is her name. And they're like, it's Taja's music. We just woo, woo, woo. So, you know, shout out to uh, Justin and Zach, uh, Zachary, if I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Zachary, I, I met you. And they, they were nice guys. They showed love, gave daps and pounds and went on about the rest of my day. But the one thing that I took away from that, just that brief interaction with the members of the band, supporting members of the band, 
that they they give it up they gave her her props and i think there's a level of humility with that so shout out to you guys seems like you guys got a nice band a nice crew a nice chemistry going along with yourselves so uh let's fast forward to the end of the show black midi's done people were sweating from turning up so much and it's time to it's time to seal the deal it's time to like, all right, like this is now or never. If she don't come out to at her own merch table to sell her stuff, I might have missed I might have missed the the boat on that. So she's, you know, she's selling merch. I think she her set went really well enough for people to buy the records because they bought all the records up. This was mine at the crib already. I thankfully already had a record because I would have been tight. The time I came up, all the records were gone. I'm like son like y'all is bugging because i was going to buy one and do a giveaway like i was going to do a giveaway i was going to just give it away to somebody who out I, I, it wasn't going to be no contest i was just going to give it away just a part of my little podcast thing whatever just to, just to share the wealth you smell me so we get up we get up me and my mans we come he's over there chopping it up with her i start chopping it up with her and was talking about just like how's the tour life and things like that and they had popped a tire on their way there and she was telling me how how they just got to pittsburgh in time to the venue in time to do a sound check she mentioned on stage how she was tired very naturally like being in a whip being on a road for hours at a time like is exhausting like you know what i'm saying like and they're coming from this city and that city that state all on the east side on the east coast and midwest like it's <laughs> that's tiring and so i went on to just echo how i appreciate uh the show that that she put on and and doing what she does and selling her merch and everything and i also asked about uh <clears throat> i asked about the finances of in being an indie artist i think she's on it she belongs to a, a a record label called mexican summer i got this mexican summer sticker when i got her album and i just asked about how how the finances work and uh getting an advance like uh, just how things work because a lot of shows i go to are for uh indie artists and people who are on like indie record labels, they don't have a huge machine behind them. So she went on to talk about that and how uh, the merch is a big thing, how the merch is uh, something where the money could get put back in their pocket. And I already had picked out a shirt to buy, but I bought another shirt because I was going to buy a record. But I want to like I actually like like this artist. So I wanted to support uh, this artist. And uh, if, if I can do that by buying a shirt, I bought one for my wife. So uh, I got me a shirt. I got her a shirt. If they had any more records, I would have caught me a record, too. That's a fact. So uh, we did that. Uh, asked her about Halado Negro, uh, somebody who I've um, seen in concert and met as well. And she just talked about how uh, Halado Negro is uh, such a great person and a good friend. She had a genuine smile on her face when she talked about him. And uh, cause I saw her in a video doing like some backup. I don't know if she was holding the guitar or bass, but she was doing some <laughs> backup strings for the guy, uh, Halado Negro. So uh, we had a nice little brief interaction and I was recording the whole thing. I would love to play it for you, but uh, <laughs> that footage doesn't exist. I was recording absolutely nothing. I had a camera all up in her face recording absolutely nothing. Why was I recording absolutely nothing? <laughs> I'll tell you what. I guess I pressed record on my joint. I was using this, by the way. This thing, y'all remember this from one of them videos? It's a Bluetooth, uh, it's a Bluetooth, uh, tripod so you know it's i had this joint all set up it has a start and stop button on here i had to look at my camera to make sure or a, or a record and stop button on here and i just looked at my camera to make sure i ain't press nothing because i believe i must have pressed something on here or just press the camera record button and it uh, stopped recording so i got absolutely none of that <laughs> that conversation on camera and I am tight about that. 
I was so excited to post that up because that's what I wanted to do with the podcast. I wanted to go to these shows and get a little bit of footage of the artist uh, talking about this, that and the other. But that didn't happen. That was my second L. Uh, Actually, that was my third L. The second L was all the records being sold out. I was telling my wife when I got home, I'm like, my mind was on getting the records after the show because you don't want to be holding a record for the duration of a whole concert. Meanwhile, there's re-entry to the vi- to the venue. So I could have just, I'm not thinking at the time, I could have just bought a record or two, bought all the merch I needed, and took it to the whip. I could have took it to the whip. So it's like I was kicking myself for that. I took three L's that day, um, three L's. I was, I was just collecting L's like Sonic coins, dogs. But You know that. But it is what it is. At the end of the day, I got to see a good show. I got to see one of my favorite artists. And that's what it is. It's not always about uh, what you want. Sometimes it's appreciating what you have. Right. All right. So we just put a a positive spin on that. Uh, I I just I got this shirt. The shirt that I'm wearing is uh, is merch uh, by by Lorraine. You can support her by a I don't know if they still do Bandcamp Fridays, the uh, the website Bandcamp. They do th- something like, you know, every Friday or something like that, where when you buy from Bandcamp, all the proceeds or all the money goes directly to the artist. It's something like that. Don't quote me on that, but it, 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 it's, it's something like that. So, yeah, and that was pretty much it. I hollered at the tour manager, too, and the tour manager was a cool guy. He's like, you know. My job is to send emails, drive. It's the tour manager who's driving and, you know, doing this, that and the third. So I hollered at him. He was a cool dude, too. He said he likes what he does. And the one thing that you got to remember is these a lot of these indie artists may be on these labels or these smaller labels, these independent labels. But a lot of these people are still working jobs they still like music isn't your source of income i think when when we're younger or when i was younger you think if you're signed you're rich if you're putting out music and doing concerts oh you're you got money or and i'm not calling them broke or anything i'm saying how we need to support (laughs) our indie artists that's 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 what i'm talking about how we need to support uh the artists that we like and you know (laughs) Being signed doesn't mean millionaire. That's why a lot of these rappers is capping, too. I know that for a fact. If you there's a a lot of these people don't got money like they do. That's why when I see these folks on Instagram and they're acting like they got money, these cats don't got no money. If these cats, these people don't got no money. But I'm going to end this episode. Didn't want to make it too long. But uh, if you get a chance to see Lorraine in your city, go check her out. Uh, Black Midi as well. Black Midi was turned. <laughs> they 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 put on. They went stupid. They went crazy. They was going dumb. Uh, but shout out to Lorraine. Shout out to the band. Uh, you guys are you guys are great. You put on a great show. I respect it. Imagine what they can do. You listen to that music. Imagine what they could do with a bigger budget. Uh, even just performance wise. Imagine the things like you think about Kanye. He he puts on this whole extrav- extravagant extra stuff. It's not just the music. It's the performance as well. And the thing that's going on surrounding it. But they did it on whatever budget they got. Shout out to Lorraine. Shout out to anybody who's watching. I thank you for the support. This is the Cool Hand Podcast. Something you got to deal with. Easy. Yeah, I feel good right now, though, and it's because of you guys, so thank you.